Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to make a glue gun uh, print. So I'm just going to use this magazine image to draw on with a glue gun and then turn that into a print. So the first step is if I'm using a magazine image, I want to glue that to a piece of cardboard. I need it to be sturdy. So I'm going to Mod Podge my surface. So this would be like where, you know, I was just talking about the print, the print painting I got of my dog. You could take a photo of an animal that you care about and you could glue gun on top of that if you wanted to do that. Okay, so put this down. Scraping across to get all the bubbles out. Then I'm going to sharpie on top of this, and my focus is on basically the shapes. And this will be a guide for me to draw on with my glue gun. A helpful guide. And I don't think I'm going to do this whole thing. I'm just going to do a portion and then I'll print on my uh, the printing plate I made um, of the dog. I'm going to use that again. Okay. And I'm not being super fussy and precise about it because when I start drawing with my glue gun, I'm going to get blobs. I'm going to get sort of a wiggly line, but um, it has more character. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I've got this Sure Bonder glue gun. So the key to this is to squeeze and draw at the same time. So I'm squeezing. So the high temp, it's more fluid than a low temp glue gun. If you have arthritis and this is hard for you, you could do this with Elmer's glue, but you'd have to wait for your Elmer's glue to dry. So if you're impatient like me, you're using the glue gun. Okay, so then I would let this dry. I would do the whole thing, let it dry. And then coat that with some gesso. So it's sealed. And right now I cannot get my gesso open. It's dried like a rock. Let's see if I can, there we go, okay. Okay, so there's the gesso and I like this little mini roller that you can get at the paint department. It's about $3, it comes with this little tray super useful. Okay, so then I would roll on top of that. Now I can really see my glue gun lines. Okay, then let that whole thing dry or hit it with a blow dryer. And then I'll go into rolling paint on here. Okay. So here's the dog. Uh, template. I've already pulled some prints from it, but I'm going to do some more. And one of them is going to be on cotton fab. Actually, it's a cotton fabric. It's a pillowcase. You could even print on um, fabric that has a pattern. That could be that could be interesting. 
Okay, so I am using a liquid, um, a fluid black paint. This is El Cheapo from Michaels. I'm using black, but you could really do any color that you want. Laura, can you do this on a t-shirt? Yes. Thank you. You could, you could do it on a t-shirt, um, but it's a little trickier, right? Cause you don't want to print through both layers of your t-shirt. So you'd have to you do have some fritzing with that to figure that one out. Do you have to set it with an iron? Um, no, acrylic paint, you don't. You can paint uh, right on a t-shirt and it'll be fine. How so long I'm, does it last with washings? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the answer to that one. Okay, so here is um, solid black. I think it's going to be pretty dark. Let's just see what I get here. I'm using rice paper. I like to rub with my hands. You can use a spoon. The only thing is if you keep rubbing at a certain point, uh, the paper is going to, to start, um, the paint is going to start drying and sticking to your paper. So I wouldn't spend too much time. Okay, so here's print number one, pretty dark, right? So you're not going to love all of your prints. Now I'm going to go again. Oops, I got too much paint on there. Blobby, blobby. Okay, so let's say it's too much paint. I can take a dry brush and I can pull some of that paint off. I can even wipe it with a paper towel to pick up some of that paint. And I'm, I'm starting with uh, black for simplicity's sake, but you could paint this directly with color and then pull a print. That's another way of going, but you're going to have to work a little bit faster so that your paint um, doesn't dry before you pull your print. Okay, so here's the next one. I can also consciously rub some areas more than others. So if I don't want that background to be as dark, I can kind of skip out on it a little bit. And then you can even, while the paint is still wet, I could come in here and I'm using that same dry brush. I can kind of move. This is satisfying. I can move this paint around a little bit. So I'm making the eyes a little darker there if I wanted to. Okay. All right, now I'm going to do it again with, let's see, I'm gonna go fabric. Can you do two colors at once? Um, you could. So when I'm done, I'll show you my other lesson handout that has multiple colors. Um, it's a little more complicated, which is why I'm focusing just on, on the black right now. Okay. Oh, I have some left over. This is part of the, the bed sheet. So let's say I wanna pull off some of that paint, I could I could do that with a rag. Makeup sponges are really good too. Okay, let's see what I get with 
the pillowcase that's imperfect because I have not not ironed. The great thing about the fabric is later you can add um, like more of a fluid paint and it'll it'll seep and spread um, in a really interesting and beautiful way. Okay, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. So I think I'm going to save this for next week and then maybe I'll do some of that... Um, paint with more water in it and it'll be like a stain I'll show you it'll be kind of cool okay then I'm going to do one more uh, with the brown paper and this this one is that paper you get at the hardware store for masking off or protecting the floor when you're painting your walls I like it because it's a little bit thinner than a grocery bag. Okay, easier to work with. Okay, I think I'm gonna try the opposite this time. I'm gonna try and leave the surround dark and I'm gonna wipe away some of the dock. Okay, let's see. It would have been better to put the curly side down, but okay. Okay, so there's even though it may seem kind of limited, there's a there's a lot you can do. With this, I think on Monday's class I added, um, I painted with gesso with white. So there's a lot of things you can play with. Um, here's one other. When your plate is dry, let's see if I can find it. You could, you have to pretend it's dry. You could go over with, um, Pull or crayon and do do a, a rubbing. So it's kind of like a, a print from on the top. If I can find a piece of charcoal, actually, I can do this. Maybe my charcoal pencil. So you'd have to use the side of it. It's like when you did rubbings when you were a kid, you know, how it's dimes. So be better if I had a flat piece of charcoal, but I think you get the idea. So this would be a different look. All these different versions. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna end and then I'll try and find a big piece of charcoal and I'll um, show you that sample and then maybe hit record so you can see it. Okay. So I'm back. I did a chalk rubbing of my printing template. Um, it's okay. I don't know, but it's all trial and error. So that's another approach. Oh, I accidentally am recording. Here is my dog printed on wallpaper, which could take the subject matter, you know, in another direction. Um, 
There we go.